you know, you've died and your delightful ex-husband or ex-wife has inherited, you know, your house and wow. so everything automatically goes to them. Oh my God. We met, how did we meet? Do you remember? Because I don't. I came here. Yeah. I and came. somehow we connected, maybe on the internet. On the internet. I, I had had my coffin already. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't that long ago. No, I think I actually came before that, didn't I? Then I, because I think this is like the third time I've been. Yeah. So the first the time, time I got in the coffin. coffin. wasn't here. Yeah. <laughs> and you got in the coffin. <laughs> now you're being interviewed yeah. in front of the coffin. What happened so. next with the coffin? <laughs> Hi, I'm Christy Scott and my business is called The Death Planner. Um, and I class myself as an end of life um, planner. And I, my work includes things like will writing, lasting powers of attorney, uh, letter of wishes, trust work. Um, and I would also do something called death cleaning if required. Death cleaning? Is that like Swedish death cleaning? Yeah, I just, I, yeah, it is, you just but I drop the Swedish, Swedish um, because people, yeah, get a little bit confused, but yeah, so basically, it's almost like house clearance, so right. if, if and when somebody dies, I mean, you can do it before somebody dies, mm. so you can go in and, and sort of cleanse their house and, and get rid of a lot of stuff, um, and mark, you know, certain items down for certain people, so when the person does die, the family know who gets what. Yeah. Um, or you can go in afterwards and do like a house clearance. So, you know, if the house is being sold, you can go in and clear down all the stuff and help the family with getting rid of stuff, selling stuff. Um, so, do you do like pricing of items and everything, or do you just help kind of organize and then they can take care of selling? Yeah, so I can do bits of both. Um, it's some of it is simpler than you think. You know, you just put some stuff on Facebook Marketplace for mm. people. Um, I mean, if there's high value stuff, then I'd always get, a, you know, a professional yeah. valuation. Um, but the families normally just need some sort of guidance about yeah. what to do, where to go. So it's more a support rather than mm. doing everything. Um, but it's also like the physical, getting rid of stuff and yeah. moving stuff, putting stuff into storage. Just yeah, just that help of yeah. helping people know what to do and where to go and who they can contact. Yeah, I think that getting rid of things pre-death is actually easier. so much easier and something that more people, I don't know, I guess I can see it either way. I've certainly had clients who just want, like, they don't really want to confront the fact that they're going and also they want their stuff still like around them and yeah. they want to feel like they're at home. Yeah. and. You know, it's not like they're like, you can deal with all this, F you, but it's kind of like they don't want to worry about that. But Yeah, and I think people have so much stuff. I yeah. think if you think of like cleansing your house, you probably wouldn't even notice yeah, what you've got rid true. of. I mean, you've got the loft that you don't even see. Mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of stuff I've got in my loft is disgusting. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could get rid of all that and the house wouldn't look or feel any different. Yeah. Um, and I just think it helps the people that you leave behind because if you've had a, like a general cleanse, they know what's left is the stuff that really meant something. Yeah. Um, and they'll know that you wanted this to go to such and such. Mm. So um, the person can actually help you decide, like the, di the person who's going to die can yeah. help you decide where the stuff is going to be going to yeah. and that can be... And if it's, got, if it's got no meaning, if it's just like, I don't know, you know, you've got a massive book collection, yeah. you can make sure that it goes somewhere that's, that it benefits, you know, you can get rid of it all to the charity shop. Mm. And 
I don't know, it's just, I don't know. I, I think if I were to be dying, it would, for me personally, it would be, it would help me process, you know, because you're getting rid of, yeah. it would just help you feel more at peace, I think, because, in, I mean, like I said, it's a personal thing to me, but I compartmentalise stuff and I think I'd be like, right, house is sorted, mm. documents are sorted. I'd be the same. And I've, yeah, I'd be I've passed same. on my wishes and it, yeah. it just gives a clearer... I mean, I, I, I've had clients before who turned it into kind of a more social thing as well, like, oh, I've got all these things that I want to give to specific people and then invite that person yeah. over to give and like to say goodbye. And also, like give the history of what they're giving. So yeah. this meant this to me, it was given to me by this person. So I think when people die, or you know, not necessarily when they die, but like families can be so disjointed now, mm -hmm. like in distance, um, not just in, you know, whether you see somebody all the time, but, and people don't know, you know, stories about, you yeah. know, and that's where like family history gets lost and, yeah. Like you say, the social thing that, you know, come round, I've got this to give you and you can go through what it means and yeah. it's just it's nice. a nice way of doing something mm -hmm. rather than just like, oh, grandma's died, she left you this, you know, yeah. what the hell's that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I've talked about it on this channel before, but just the, the idea that we have, like, we have our stuff and we think of it as our stuff, yeah. but actually, like, the thing will exist after you leave, so yeah. it's like that passing along of a, an object. Yeah, and if it was personal to you, and it won't mean anything to anybody else, yeah. you can get rid of it. Exactly. You know, yeah. even if you keep it until you've died, but just make a note and say, feel free to just dump so this they know. stuff. Yeah, just, yeah. so it makes it easy. And you, that person that's left behind isn't going, oh my God, I'm gonna feel so terrible if I get rid of this. Yeah, when that because stress didn't need to be. I think it may have meant a huge amount to mum or dad. And actually it didn't, it was just some, crap you'd bought at like a car boot <laughs> that you thought was a little bit pretty or yeah I don't know maybe I think think into it too much but I just think that after somebody's died one of the hardest things I know from what people have told me is the clearing out of the house mm -hmm. um, it can be a huge burden I mean time and money yeah you know, money wise as well get actually physically yeah. getting rid of stuff nowadays yeah. You can't just dump it. it. Right. You know, it actually costs to get rid of stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, and just, as you said, like, the emotional turmoil someone can feel because some people, especially if you're grieving, like, yeah. they just cannot face a room full of stuff and it gets left for, like, years and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They think it's, like, disrespectful yeah. to throw things away. They want the person's blessing, but of course they can't have it. And people fight over stuff. And you know, fight, if you haven't yeah. if you haven't put somebody's name on it, you know, it can lead to massive arguments. Yeah. I wanted that when I know mum wanted me to have it, or no she didn't, she didn't write it anywhere. So Yeah. See this is a great segue into our next combo, which is writing or why you should, you know, take care of your paperwork and yeah. put things in writing before and what kind of problems can be if born out of if you don't, yeah. Yeah, so obviously will writing is is what I do mainly. Yeah. Um, Why would I hire a person to write my will? Can can I do it online? You can do it online. Um, you know, you can do it yourself. I just think you need to be very careful. Right. Um, because you know there are, are little clauses that can help that you wouldn't necessarily know about. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the wills online are really basic. Right. I mean, if you need, if you've got children and you need to leave something in trust. Mm -hmm you won't get any of that covered um, in a will online. Um, and if you do, the ones that say that they're free, you will end up paying something for I see. extra work. Mm -hmm. So there is a catch. Mm -hmm. um, like I say, it's, you know, a will, you can just write something on a piece of paper yourself, but you do need to be careful. And obviously people can contest the will. Um, so it is always worth. What do you mean test the will? Like contest dispute the will. It. So oh, yeah, they, it. you know, it, yeah, if mum or dad dies and you, you think, you know, if you haven't been left anything or something's been left to somebody else that you think should have been yours, then yeah, you can take it to court and fight wow. it. Um, obviously, if you've got a really well-written will mm -hmm. um, with explanations in as to why you haven't been left that 
and it's really hard to obviously get that will overruled. Mm. So I just think writing your will, it's rather, it's quite cathartic to write mm. it. Um, like I say, personally, for me, you know, touch wood, I'm not poorly or anything, but if I was, it would help me process and, mm. um, you know, it's almost like a, a tick list of stuff that needs to be done. Um, and it, yeah, it can be, you know, there are all things in, that you include in a will that people don't assume will mm. be in there, you know. People assume that it covers things like property, money, um, but it can also include uh, funeral um, wishes and you know, even down to something like excluding someone. So if you've had a fallout and you definitely don't want mm -hmm. such and such to get anything, you know, you can include that in there in, in detail. Mm. Um, it's just belt and braces really. And, yeah. Um, apart from making sure your wishes are followed, um, I think the main reason to get your paperwork in order is just to make it easier on your loved ones once you have mm -hmm. passed. Um, there'll be, you know, that there's no confusion about who gets what, and you know exactly what the person wanted. Um, it helps with things like arguments over money and yeah. inheritance and yeah, all of that. I just think it's a kindness good. for your, your people you leave behind. Yeah. Why do you think? Because I think, well, most people that I speak to who aren't prepared haven't gotten a will written, and I think. Um, certainly like younger people yeah. are less likely to do this yeah. because why would we think about that if mm -hmm. we're not expected to die but of course no one knows when, when they're going to die so but wh why do you think we haven't been we told off. yeah why do you think that it's not just something that we do like as part of our no. life stuff we take care of in our life like we pay we do all our insurances, yeah. health insurance, um, car insurance, we go to the dentist, we pay our taxes, like why don't we take care of our will and then, you know, keep amending it throughout our lives? I think a lot of people, I mean we plan for absolutely everything, don't we? We yeah. plan for, for having a baby, we plan for birth, we plan for birthday parties, we plan for um, new jobs, moving house everything to like the nth degree like yeah. people get books and they you know write down everything and I'm that person I will write lists and but when it comes to wills and like end of life I think people think that if they do it it will kind of hurry the process along but it it might jinx them and like they'll you know they'll die the next day or something I think people worry that if they do this sort of thing it's kind of tempting fate so do you think it's like a deep-seated superstition yeah. kind of thing? Yeah. Wow. Um, I guess you plan for a birth and it happens. You plan right. for a birthday party and it happens. Yeah. People, I think, don't talk about death because it's the taboo subject. But I don't know. The more you talk about it, is it likely to bring it on? I don't know. That's what people <laughs> think. I just think it's, you know, if you do it while you're healthy, if you've got the benefit of not being ill, and you know you're healthy and you've you can do it and you can talk about it openly maybe not make fun of it but make it a light-hearted conversation get everything written down and then god forbid anything happens or you you should get a diagnosis um, that's not great you know you haven't got to go through that whole thinking about it from scratch um, you know what you want you may just have to do a couple of amendments and it's not this heartbreaking um, thing that you have to do and you have to mm -hmm. like think about in great detail and you've got the basics there. And it's less overwhelming as well, like it's less one less thing you have to take care of yeah, when I mean, you're already dealing with so much. Yeah, obviously if you're if you're told you've got cancer or, you know, any disease, all becomes that bit more real, doesn't it? And yeah. it's just that bit harder to discuss and more emotional for obviously everybody involved um, and like I say you don't you don't know I mean you could go out and get hit by a car tomorrow mm -hmm. um, young people think that it doesn't you know, they don't need a will but you know if you've got young children or you've got even if you've just got a car you have something that you've got worth something to leave to somebody mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, even more importantly, if you've got a house. Um, but I think wills are things like, you know, e even life insurance, critical illness cover. That's not discussed when yeah. you're sort of our age and younger. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these are really important things to have in place yeah. and they can make such a difference yeah. um, to yourself and, you know, almost more importantly to everybody you leave behind. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I said to you earlier, nothing is, go you know, if, if somebody dies, nothing is going to take that grief and pain away. But by doing these documents in advance, you can just make a really shitty situation just a little bit easier yeah um and i think your loved ones will feel or get some peace from knowing that they've done what you wanted mm -hmm. and that they've carried out your wishes and i don't know i just think it must be a nice thing to be able to it's the one final thing you can do for somebody isn't it yeah well and it's also just having clear instructions from the person there's no mystery as to what yeah. they wanted because i think that is where a lot of suffering comes from after someone dies actually yeah. is like i don't know what they like it's very important to do what mm -hmm. the person wanted and to have to take Guess on well. those yeah things for yourself and make that make those arrangements when you don't actually know it can it can leave someone feeling like really uncomfortable and like Useless. guilty or yeah and just kind of stagnated. A lot of people don't know what can happen if they don't leave a will, right. you know, like the effects if you know, you're not married to somebody and your mm -hmm. partner dies and you've got children, um, you know, that can be horrendous in itself, you know. So it's like, so say I was dying and I wasn't married and I had mm -hmm. kids, sorry, and I didn't have kids. Um, so even if I was with my partner for like 30 years, yeah. would it then go to, like would my assets go to my next of kin automatically? Yeah, so it's people that have got partners, like long-term partners that mm -hmm. haven't married, they have this, I think it's just a myth I think that goes around that if you've been together a certain time, so I think people tend to think five or seven years for some reason, that if their partner dies, everything automatically goes to them, as it would if you were married. It, right. would, it would go to your spouse. But it doesn't. Um, so if, you, if you've been some, with someone for 30 years, you've got this whole life with that person, mm -hmm. but the house is in their name, then if they've, they've written a will, or if they haven't written a will, it, it doesn't necessarily go to you. I mean, you could find yourself, after 30 years, having to find you know, somewhere else to live um, and starting your whole life again. And so not only have you lost your life partner, mm. you're now having to do things like find a house and, right. re, you know, it's just... What if that person was like the executor, like the financial power of attorney? Would that still be the same? Yeah, so unless you're named, so if you're not married, unless you're named as the beneficiary, mm. then you don't benefit. Yeah. Um, and you know, people that get divorced, you know, they don't update their wills. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, and wow. you know, you can find that you've, you know, you've died and your delightful ex-husband or ex-wife has inherited, you know, your house and wow. so everything automatically goes to them. Wow. So it's, it's really important stuff. I just think the word needs to, to get out there really. It should be taught in schools. You yeah, know? I was just going to say. You're taught about all sorts mm -hmm. of business stuff and you know, life stuff. Right. You need to talk about death stuff as well. Yeah, I agree. What if, um, so what if a young person did go ahead and get a will mm -hmm. made up? Um, I guess for anyone, but for a young person who's presumably going to live for many more years. Yeah. So where is the will, you have to tell people where the will is, or is it like, how does one access a will after if no one has been told? Yeah, so I will always um, register the will free of charge with something called the National Will Register. Okay. So if you were never sure if such and such had made a will, mm -hmm. you can go to this will register, which is, like I said, a nationwide thing. Okay. Um, and you can find out if they had a will. 
Okay. So whilst they won't hold a copy of the will, it will have the details of who made it for them, okay. what date it was made, um, details of the executors, so you can always trace the will. So but then you still have to find the will? Yeah. I see. Um, there's something called the National Will Storage Centre, which I always recommend my customers to use. Mm. Um, the will is stored there because the only valid copy of a will is the original copy, so the right. one signed copy. Okay. So whilst I will always give my customers um, a copy for them to keep on their computer, the only legal copy is this the signed copy. Mm. So, you know, because houses can catch fire and floods and all that sort of thing, I always advise them to keep them at National Will Safe. Um, and what they do is when they receive the will, they send out like a little credit card to the executors mm. and it will have a reference number on. Um, so, God forbid, when anything happens to the person whose will it is, so when they die, the executors have the card, all they do is they ring National Will Safe, quote the reference, mm -hmm. and the, um, the original will gets sent out to them. Wow, and so what happens if someone has amended a will, that one gets destroyed, and then the new one gets... So the valid will is always the most recent. Okay, cool. Um, obviously, if you, if you write a will through myself, I always make sure that you know, the storage company have been the most up to date. Um, but yeah, I mean, there can, be, there can be times when people have written two or three wills and obviously it takes time to work out which is the up-to-date one and which is the valid yeah. one. See, that's what I think the value of hiring someone like yourself is because I've, not only is it helpful to have your expertise in looking at everything and making mm -hmm. sure everything is dealt with, but also just like checking up on you every couple yeah. of years, seeing if anything changed yeah. and also keeping everything up to date like if you aren't expecting to die anytime soon yeah i think that maybe a lot of people would just forget to do that or yeah. they wouldn't know to do people that people don't always realize what will affect a will so yeah. obviously i could write a will for a couple that just got married um and like um i said i would i check in on people sort of every 18 months two years mm -hmm. nothing formal just you know a quick phone call just say you know god have you got divorced in the last couple mm -hmm. of years? Uh, have you had any children? Um, have you moved house? You know, just addresses General to update, things. just little things, mm -hmm. yeah. And those changes can be made so quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like a working document. Mm -hmm. So you start it, you do the basis of it, which is the main, you know, the main of it. Um, and then you just make general updates. Yeah, because I think that's another common misconception and why some people might not make a will mm -hmm. when they're younger or not sick is that a will is like final, the yeah. final word and I can't do anything else mm -hmm. to amend it um, and it's only for when you know you're going to die. I think people struggle with the cost of them as well. I really? mean it's a couple of hundred pounds to write yeah. a will which is a lot of money. But right. in the grand scheme of things, if you've got a house worth 300,000, mm. it's nothing, is it, compared to the value of your estate? Right. Um, so something else you could do, um, you could write a letter of wishes. Mm -hmm. um, so that can also be a working document, and it, it's not actually a legal document. Right. So what you would do is, obviously, you'd tell your boyfriend or your parents where this document was, mm -hmm. and if anything should happen to you. You don't have a will, but you have these wishes that you would like Some to carry out. Yeah. yeah. And like I say, it's not legal, so they don't have to follow it. Yeah. But hopefully your partner and your or your parents would want to honour your wishes. You'd like yeah. to think that they would do what you wished to be done. So, you know, and that could cost you nothing. You could yeah. just write, you know, I wish to be cremated, I wish my ashes to be scattered at such and such. Um, I wish to have a celebrant. Mm -hmm. uh, at my funeral, I don't want it to be a religious service. Mm -hmm. um, all these things. Um, I want a wicker coffin. I'd like this music. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and because it's not legal, you can amend it at any time. Yeah. Um, just let the people know where the up-to-date copy is. So you yeah. can just keep it on your hard drive or yeah. your computer. Yeah. Um, but it's just communicating to people where this stuff is yeah. that they can find. And also, like this is a little off topic but how to access your bank accounts and how to access yeah. all these things like password so i also do um digital um 
digital site plans. That's so good. So I feel like that is so important. It and is. People and don't it's think becoming about that. more important. And yeah. people don't realise how much of an online presence that they have. Yeah. I mean, if you just sit down for five minutes and think, I think the average, is it sort of a thousand passwords if they think the each individual has? Wow. Um, you know, you, when you think of like Facebook, Instagram, bank accounts, shopping accounts, so Sainsbury's, Tesco's, yeah. um, and then there's all the catalogues you might belong to, like Next, I mean all these all online the shopping. All the portals that you have, yeah. everything, yeah. Um, so it's just keeping a log and keeping it up to date, and again that doesn't have to be a legal document, that's just a working document yeah. that you just need to keep updated, mm -hmm. because it can be so difficult once you've died for people to access. You know, it's like all your online photographs. Yeah. I mean, people lose these, you know, 10 years worth of photographs that they have because they can't get exactly. them. It's heartbreaking. I know, just because they can't, like, get into something. They can't yeah. have access to it. Are there any other aspects of what you do that you think you would want to talk about? Um, I mean, there's, there's so much, you know, there's lasting powers of attorney for health and welfare. Mm. And, again, you know, youngsters don't think... And I'm not talking about youngsters. When I say youngsters, I'm meaning like my age, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You're but, very youngsters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, people think, oh, nothing's going to happen to me. You know, oh, I'm not going to lose capability, you know, until I'm at least in my 60s, 70s, yeah. dementia, all that sort of stuff. But losing capability can be temporary. You know, you could have a car accident yeah. and be in a coma for six weeks. Mm -hmm. But that for, for that six weeks, you need somebody to be yeah. managing your accounts and your mm -hmm. finances. Um, I just think people need to be aware of this stuff and just how it can help them. Yeah. Um, and I know it's the hardest thing to discuss, but it has to. You know, everybody without fail is going to die. It's just the one thing, mm -hmm. um, and it's the one thing you just don't know when it's going to happen. Um, yeah. And I don't think it's morbid, I just think it's being practical. It's and just like, reality, like, yeah. it's not morbid, it's just what's going to happen, as you say. Like, yeah. it's just a part of life, just like being born is a part of life. Yeah, and I just think it, it's the one thing you can do. You know, if you've got a family and you love them, I just think it's the one kindness that you can do. is just to, to do as much as you can, even if you just do a little bit, just to make that after, you know, after you've died. That really crappy time, just that little bit easier. One less thing for people to have to worry about and think about. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for doing it for people. <laughs> <laughs> how did, by the way, how did you, like, why is this your job? Did you just feel oh, like God, no, you... no. Um, so I was a funeral director for quite a few years. But why were you that? I don't know, because before that, <laughs> I did nothing to do with the deaf industry. Um, I've always had like a morbid curiosity about yeah. death. I don't necessar necessarily believe in like the afterlife or anything like that. I've just always... I just think it's the one last thing you can do for somebody, and I just love the fact that it's just... A lo I think it's just a lovely thing to be able to do, is look after that family when they've lost yeah. someone. And yeah. I really loved funeral directing. Um, but whilst I was doing that, I saw the other side when mm -hmm. people would come in to organise people's funerals and they didn't know what their loved ones wanted, you know, whether they wanted to be cremated or buried. And I could see the turmoil it caused, right. people fighting in their own minds about what to do. And I just thought, you know, something needs to be done. Something, these people need help to make these decisions. And mm. so that's where it came from, really. Um, and it, it still is a taboo subject, but I think it's becoming, I think with COVID and everything else, it's just becoming more prevalent for people. And more just, in the forefront of yeah. people's minds, I think, yeah. for sure. Well, thank you for chatting with thank me and for being me. on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Do you want to say anything to sign off? No. Okay, she said no. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm done.